we call this meeting to order of the City of Montpelier Development Review Board for Monday, November 4th, 2019. My name is Daniel Richardson. I serve as chair of the board. The other members from my right are Rob Goodwin, Kevin O'Connell, Meredith Crandall, staff, Kate McCarthy, Claire Rock. Okay, the first order of business is approval of the agenda. There is one item of business, 81 North Street, the uh, final plan review for a two lot subdivision. Any additions to the agenda? If not, I will take a motion to approve the agenda as printed. So moved. Motion by Kevin. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Second by Claire. All those in favor of the agenda as printed, please raise your right hand. We have our agenda. There are no comments from the chair this evening. Um, I will cover the fact that our next meeting is canceled under other business, um, although I just did. <laughs> uh, <laughs> review and approval of the meeting minutes from uh, October 21st, 2019. Myself, Kevin, Kate, Rob, and Michael were present, so we have just enough to form a quorum. Do I have either a motion or any, well, let me start out. Do I have any corrections to the minutes as printed? Hearing none, do I have a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Motion by Rob. Do I have second? Second. Second by Kate. Uh, all those in favor and eligible to vote on the minutes from October 21st, 2019, please raise your right hand. And the minutes are approved. Good. That brings us to our first item of business, which is... 81 North Street, if the applicant will step forward. Uh, and what I'll have you do is I'll have you introduce yourself, and then I'm going to put you under oath okay. for your testimony purposes. Is there anyone else here who is here to testify on this application? Okay. So please state your name for the My record. My name's Eric Stauffer. I'm the owner of 81 North Street, along okay. with Sean Folks. So, uh, Eric, if you My name is Eric Stauffer. I'm the owner of 81 North Street, along with Sean Folks. Thanks. It helps. It helps for a television audience as well as these cameras are voice driven, so they actually move around when hear people speak and are picked it. up by a microphone. <laughs> so if you raise your right hand, do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give for the matter under consideration shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth under pains and penalties of perjury? I do. Thank you very much. So why don't you uh, just give us a brief overview of any changes that you've proposed? We've reviewed as an initial sketch plan, yep. this application. Um, but if you've made any changes, either minor or significant, yep. why don't you? There haven't been any major changes. Uh, it's been surveyed, uh, reviewed the uh, comments from the uh, sketch plan review, and then upon receiving uh, notes back from uh, the final application, and specifically the DPW notes mm -hmm. that came back, uh, I have a proposal here for the access. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So, just so I understand, what you're proposing here yep. is shared access. It's a single curb cut, but uh, no easements involved between the two parcels. So there'd be one curb cut basically from the property line uh, onto lot one, there'd be 12 feet of access, and then from the property line, uh, 12 feet of access onto lot two. Okay. And that looks like that would involve narrowing the existing curb cut. Correct. So the current curb cut for lot one is about 19 feet wide depending on exactly how you want to measure and a lot of that is really the sweep on the right hand side of how people have driven over for the last number of years so in the red line indicates there are seven feet uh, that would kind of be infilled to close that up to the uh, recommended 12 feet and there is curbing that's there it's a uh, asphalt curbing uh, like the, on the back side there's an image that shows my tape measure, tape measure next to the curbing it's only a couple inches high right there so I spoke with Kurt about what it would entail for me to do that curbing. He gave me a drawing of what it should look like, and it seems pretty straightforward to fill in that curbing and then uh, infill behind it. There's grass there to narrow up that opening. So, you, so you'd build up at the asphalt curb along along that seven foot. Correct. Okay. Yeah, we'd build up curb and then infill behind it to grass that into. 
Okay, so just so I understand the the otherwise uh, apart from closing off and narrowing the curb cut, yeah. the driveway on lot one would stay the same. Correct. Um, but then the driveway for lot two would take that same the the new twelve foot curb yeah. cut and would go in whatever direction it would yeah there's really only one direction it could go okay but, but yes it would basically parallel um, it could almost immediately start to peel off but it would yeah um, start at the same point um so i just realized that uh staff down in the office did not pull up the actual potential site plan in here for you that was in a larger print so okay. i'm going to go downstairs and grab that okay um because i didn't realize that So, okay, uh, and I presume the updated site plan will uh, it shows specify. That drawn, it shows that drawn right on there, okay. as well as setbacks and everything else. You can imagine our confusion not yeah, having that. Got it. Uh, but just so I'm on. Uh, this is somewhat of a different beast than what we've dealt with before, in the sense that they're they're both they're both driveway. I mean, they're they're separate driveways. They're just abutting well, against really each close. other, as opposed to yeah. <laughs> a shared driveway. But, Correct. Um, in between, is there likely to be any any room for either like a hedge or some yeah. other type of visual blocker? That is shown in the. Uh, in the site plan, which you're going to see momentarily, okay. and what, when I had spoken with DPW, what they had um, thought would be smart was that that didn't start right out at the road, but started back X number of feet so that the person on the uphill side, lot two, could see up and down the road and vice versa. So the person on lot one could see up the hill and, and vice versa down the hill. So yes, not immediately at the curb, though. But okay. That would start um, right. 10, 12, 18 feet back. Well, that, that, that would be my concern as well, I think, because one of the reasons why we have the shared driveway is that it, it cuts down, you know, even if, and as the DPW comments indicated, even having them five feet apart is less um, less desirable yep. because to merge that together so that only, you know, cars coming out of both lots at the same time or going in won't be competing with each other. Um, on the street or, or creating that traffic issue it's a single sort of point of entry exit yeah. so um so this document was submitted previously with the application it should have been in your packets what i'm going to suggest and you can vary it is to pass it around here and then have iric be able to have it to point to things and you can call to have That'd it pulled great. up if you need it um so i'm going to start with rob and then Go pass ahead. it down um, I've, I've never heard the heard the term driveway curtain Oh. And, and your um, this handout indicates that in addition to the physical changes below, a shared maintenance of driveway curtain clause will be added to the deeds. Can you yeah. tell me what a driveway curtain is? Well, those aren't my words either. <laughs> that makes it's not up. something I throw around yeah. regularly. Okay. Um, but um, I, driveway curtain, I would imagine, would be where those two driveways meet. And that, um, yeah, exactly. So the idea being that it's understood that both parties that these things although they're on separate properties mm -hmm. and individual and there's no easements on anybody's behalf mm -hmm. that there would be a mate everybody would be responsible for where those two driveways met the road so that maybe one wasn't paved and the other was left pothole eight feet deep mm -hmm. um in exaggeration um, so i think that's what what the words are i would leave up to the my lawyer uh in the actual writing of the deeds but that i think that driveway curtain is that shared space of the road okay Good, probably snow removal there too, so that you don't end up with a yeah. Someone's not plowing fancy on as well. Yeah, <laughs> great. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Yep. Waiting. See, Rob, you had a. Do you, did you have a question on, on about the? Um, yeah, one of the drawings. Go ahead. Yeah, I think just a small revision to the plat before you go to the mylar. That okay. The missing a dimension on the proposed lot line. Okay. Thank you, Rob, because I missed that when I reviewed it when it came in. Yeah, and then I guess one other thing, and I'm a little unsure about this. Um, I don't even know if we're required to show setback lines on the plat, but it does appear that the 
um, setback on the existing house lot. For a corner lot, should be a side yard at five feet. Yeah. Yep. Nope, that's right. The and I'll I can talk to um, Richard Bell to Richard make sure Bell. he understands it as well if you want, Eric. Right. Um, because right. yes, this right now he said it as the it looks like the rear instead of the side. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I was actually going to make that same same point. I saw that same thing. You you understand what we're talking about? Which right. on lot one. Yeah. Um, right now there's a dotted line at the rear of the building uh really closest to lot two closest to lot two and that's your setback there yeah. but it seems to be drawn as if it was a rear yard setback but because that lot is on a corner you don't really have a rear yard okay. and the way our zoning laws are they treat the front on north street as frontage they treat the front on ewing street as frontage and then this the the back side away from Ewing Street is side, and the back side away from North Street is also side. Okay. So you have two sides and two fronts. Yeah. Okay. So so I think you have, which is, I think, inerrors to your benefit, which yep. is this this is not rear, so it's not subject to the same rear setbacks that, say, Lot 2 is going to face on the side opposite of Ewing Street. That is a true rear. Understood. Um, and there's not, the, not that you would necessarily be building anything within that building envelope, right. but it does it should it should reflect that reality yeah. so um, that dash line should move half again towards the boundary right yeah. it should look more like the the one that's along yeah. Understood. I didn't like to mention that excellent and, and, and what you're saying is missing the dimension on the on the line the actual lot the big line right okay. yeah yeah and so just looking at this sorry let me pass this along to kate uh, uh, no, I, I just, it, it looks as if on your map there is those little green balls yes. are, would be the hedgerow, hedgerow or between the two properties yep. where the driveways have split as yep. sort of a privacy, presumably so that the people on your lot one aren't staring immediately into the dining room of the people on lot two. Vice versa. Yep. Um, we'll come back to the landscaping. Are there any other questions? And I realize Claire hasn't had a chance to look at the the drawing as well um, but are there any other questions about the driveway that's pretty straightforward I think so um, and, and I think you know my, my my read on this is that it does answer a, a lot of the DPW issues the fact that it's cut down from the 19 feet to the 12 feet and 12 feet would satisfy yeah. uh, the frontage questions that they had, or the curb cut questions that they had. Um, the, there's no, or is there any proposal as to what you're planning on building on lot two? There's not. Okay. Um, it's, frankly, I'm not sure whether I'm going to hang on to it or I'm going to sell that. So it's a little bit. Okay. That's open. But you'd be looking to, to keep all options open with At what this you point, yeah. yeah. Um, and I will note that according to the staff notes that, you know, there is a possibility that could be up to three dwelling units developed there. Um, and that's an option you would like to have available. Is that correct? I think, yeah, from my perspective, absolutely. Um, and that at least the staff the staff's take on this is that, that three units wouldn't, three additional units would not cause undue adverse effect on traffic in the area. I I would agree with that. I mean, it's a... Um, obviously, if you did create a three unit, there would have to be the requisite number of off-street parking, um, particularly in a residential neighborhood like this. I, Ewing Street, I don't know how wide it is formally, if it's three rods or less, but there, with seasonal off-street parking being an issue and a factor, I think it would be important that there be off-street parking for all three units available. I wouldn't think to do otherwise if okay. I headed that direction. Yeah. Did, 
press from the board to confirm. Uh, no, just two thousand five A. This is just a final staff comment. Okay. So it's not three five five B, but you still have to confirm three five five right. A just to make sure that. Yeah. yeah. So right. we just have to, and I, I, I think we've largely done that. So under three five zero five A, which talks about. Um, The design, design configuration of parcel boundaries, partial arrangement, um, particularly subsection A1, I1, B, <laughs> which talks about the neighborhood is primarily a single family residential neighborhood with homes fit into the terrain, most with a compact development footprint. Proposed land development may feature a modest increase in residential density accomplished primarily through conversion of existing buildings to multifamily occupancy and with a limited amount of infill on suitable sites. So I think we have to make a determination as to whether allowing this or, you know, whether we need to put a, an affirmative condition on how many units can be built there, knowing that the zoning bylaws allow up to three. Um, but if we felt that there was a compelling reason to limit that to less than three, I don't see there to be a compelling reason why it should be limited. I, I don't either. I think that the um, parking limitations for one will dictate the appropriate use of the site. I also think it's conceivable that you could put a house the same size as the existing house at 81 right next to it, and that could very easily be a three unit. Um, dwelling, which is, I think, what 81 used to be, right? Were the three units in there? I don't there? know if it was ever officially three units. Informal three. Yeah. yeah. So I, I see this is this is a suitable approach to infill, even if it is up to three units. Um, and I'm not proposing up to as a limit that this board would place. Right. Mm -hmm. No, I, I, I would agree. I mean, I'd see no no need to limit. Uh, what the zoning allows. Uh, obviously, uh, once a, a plan was developed, then it would be reviewed and uh, scrutinized at that time for its design characteristics. But three three units that that's in keeping with, with where we want to go. Right. Okay. Uh, so the next issue is is about the utilities and. Could you explain, you've had some conversations with GMP as yep. to what they can offer yes. for utilities at the site. Yep. So what they suggest, I spoke with Lauren Kelly, who's the representative for GMP for development for this area, and her suggestion was there's a power pole that's at the corner uh, of that lot and the one that's just up Ewing Street um, from, from it, from current 81 North. And there's a guide pole that is along that boundary that's about halfway back to the property line, which shows up on the survey which she suggested was replacing at GMP's cost the pole at the street, running power overhead to the pole that is uh, along halfway back that lot line, and then either going underground or overhead from that point. Her, her uh, logic was basically there's already a pole there, there's already a guy wire there, neither of those go away no matter what. So you might as well run the power overhead along that existing power corridor, um, and then difference between them dropping down and going under the ground. The house, most likely based on the shape and size of the lot, is going to be very close to that phone pole. Mm -hmm. And so that you're not really creating any visual or other impact by just doing an aerial drop to the house from that point. Um, wouldn't be, be practically unseen from the road and kind of keeping what's with it already there. So that was her feedback. Was there any, did she discuss any of the price, price differentials? She was running through numbers pretty quickly, and uh, it was a pretty quick phone conversation. But yeah, she thought that the price differential between the two would be over $2,000. I think that's indicated in the thing. And that was both between the cost of GMP's work as well as an electrician and somebody to do the digging work uh, running along. To run the power underneath? So underneath and back and up. And back up. Yeah, you got it. Uh, not necessarily from that short pole. If, I think most of that cost was coming from the road to the current guy pole. Uh, there was a difference going from that uh, pole that's halfway back the lot line overhead versus going down and under the ground. It was just a lot longer to travel. Um, and so there was a cost difference there. But that cost difference, just to be clear, is, uh, would include coming from the road under the ground, the $2,000. Does that make sense? Did I say that clearly? Uh 
Not necessarily. Okay. <laughs> so I under, from what I got, I understood that the two thousand dollar difference was running the overhead from the guy to the house versus running under. Yeah. So, but you're saying I, it's two thousand dollars to run. I believe, okay, and I could be wrong. I should talk with Lauren again to clarify if I'm Hello. if it's. Uh, but my, I think that difference was from the road, okay. not mm-hmm. from the guy pole. So presumably the difference between above ground from the guy pole and below ground from the guy pole would be less than two thousand. Seven hundred bucks, eight hundred bucks, something along those lines. Okay. Okay. Yeah, but once again, that house is probably going to be within, you know, handful of feet from the guy from the guy pole. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. So the main the main difference between running the power underground or aerial from the guy pole itself isn't really an economic it's more of a practical i mean dollars are dollars so 700 right. bucks or 800 bucks whatever that difference is sure sure but yes that's not um from the guy pole wasn't a huge consideration i mean that's if we were to put that condition on that's not the financial breaker that say two thousand dollars would represent potential greater hardship um no know. no i don't think economically no from a practical right. perspective right it's just a lot simpler and more straightforward to do it with no, I understand. Sense. I just want to make sure that the, we as a board understand the two drivers for yeah, those, because sure. I think there's two decisions there. One is, you know, do we require the utilities to run from the pole at the street, or do we, and and if not, then do we require the, the utilities from the guy wire um, to run underground and then back up, or just simply an aerial tr- drop over? And can I just step in briefly, just as a Please reminder? Do in case you didn't read this really carefully, that the standard that we're weighing this by has changed since the sketch plan. Um, that it's not just a, a physical condition issue, but that um, you can also opt to not have utilities located underground um, where the subdivision is in a section of street with existing above ground utilities and burial would not be practicable. Right. So right. it's a new standard. Langu- that's new language? That's yep. new language that took effect October 16th. Huh. Um, so that's new language, and I just wanted to make sure that we kept no, I, that in mind. I think that's a very good reminder. And I, I think that's where I was going with this as yep. well, because I think they're two different decisions. Um, and given the practicable language in the newly revised statute, that certainly uh, indicates that we should be looking at practical considerations, um, not just simply running underground because we have to or want to, um, but what's most practical. Any other questions on the utilities or? Okay. All right. Um, one of the last issue, well, there's approximately two more. Um, so let's go back to the landscaping. Uh, just so I understand the nature of the lot as it sits today, um, there's there doesn't appear, at least in the photographs, to be a lot of trees or shrubs on the lot. It looks like open. lawn, yeah. open. Yeah. Um, you're proposing to add shrubs. What any particular size, style, conifers? Uh, I hadn't gone that deep, mostly because that lot hasn't really, uh, whether it's going to be somebody's single family home or somebody mm-hmm. develops it, me or someone else has a three unit place. And I think there's enough gray area there as to what's going to happen with it. I wasn't going to propose a specific shrub or size or spacing. Right. Um, I think that would maybe more come with uh, application for the whatever gets built there down the road, the specifics thereof. I can see having some flexibility at the, at the same time. I mean, I think it's really important, you know, given the proximity of these mm-hmm. houses, that there be some type of vegetative shrub there. And I mean, I think you, you see that as well with your plans to put it in there. Yeah. And while I don't necessarily want to lock your hands on that, because obviously it changes where you're putting the shrub, I mean, where you're putting the building, um, you know, would would you be amenable to some... Uh, requirement when lot two is developed that it includes some type of um, screening hedge um, between lots between the buildings 
on lots one and two. Yeah, I mean, I think that's what's in the, in the plan. I don't know if the screening hedge means a specific thing or not. Yeah. Um, but. Uh, well, I'm thinking, you know, it's, yeah. it's it, 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 I mean, at least part of this is to clarify that when you, you know, so you have those little green balls. And sure. I understand they're just yeah. representative. Right. But, I mean, there's a big difference between, say, a bunch of spirea that, you know, never, yeah. it's never going to get above three feet. Sure. And something that's going to provide a little bit taller screening. Yeah. Like, uh you know, like a uh, cedar hedge or something yeah. like that. Not saying that we want to commit you to, you must plant a cedar hedge or you must yeah. plant, you know, something. Um, but I, I do th think that it, it, if I'm understanding correctly, you're looking to plant some sort of privacy screening hedge between or, or, or plantings that would create that buffer. Yeah. I think that's nicer than a fence, but either thing is, I think, I'd honestly like to leave it flexible because a fence may ultimately be preferred by both property owners and may factor in more smoothly to any overall landscaping plan. So I wouldn't want to tie the hands of anyone into the future. We, we do have um, a staff suggestion um, similar to what we've done with other subdivision approvals where we say that requiring, we would require a landscaping plan be included in the subsequent zoning permit application that meets the requirements of section 3506.F. Um, and landscaping, I believe, can include mm -hmm. fencery or shrubbery. Um, so I'd, I'd like to, to leave ourselves those <laughs> options. Did you did you say fencery? I did. Yeah. <laughs> For the record, I'd like to uh, I'd like to add neologism that, uh, uh, recommendation. Um, I mean, the, the, the advantage of a fencery is that it can simply be <laughs> one dimension. If it's, if it's five feet high, it stays five feet right. high. Uh, and it's, its width is um, it's also deter you know, determined by the, the uh, type of fence that's put up. Whereas a hedge has to be maintained. It can be uh, two feet today, and it can be 20 feet tomorrow. And sure. it can have the opposite effect of what you're trying to accomplish. Or have the bottom completely eaten out depending on what shows up. That's correct. That too. No, that's a fair. The, those, these are all fair points. I mean, I, I, I think my point is just really that this is clearly a site where and uh, what I want to make sure is identified that there there needs to be some type of, of buffer. Um, you know, in, in part, I think it's with keeping with the character of the neighborhood, but it's also keeping with the idea that um, you know these these houses would be relatively close to each other and uh, creating some um, visual breakup between house driveway driveway house um, so I'm, I'm I'm certainly open to you know having that and using language as we've used before um, requiring a landscape plan when the actual building is going to go up to give you the flexibility of fencery, uh, shrubbery, or otherwise. Right. Good. Yeah, I, I appreciate that flexibility. I'm, I, I live up the street in the general neighborhood on a tenth of an acre lot next to a tenth of an acre lot next to about a thir third of an acre lot. And I've only lived there five years, but I've kind of seen the neighbors evolve their yards in ways that are comfortable with corner plantings and, and this and that. So I think that I think that the privacy will ultimately be achieved. Um, Within and that the 3506.f requirement just ends up being a nudge in that direction. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the last issue I think we need to, to discuss is um, whether or not the proposal is compatible with the character of the neighborhood. Um, I, know, I guess I'll just throw it out there. I'm not hearing anything from anyone so far that would indicate the opposite. Um, you know, this is. Uh, higher density neighborhood and this would be in keeping with it um, you know looking at some of the lots that are nearby you know this isn't we're not creating two small lots where everyone else has large estates or big swaths of land it's close to downtown um, you know it seems to be uh, the proposal is for residential um, development uh, which would be keeping with the character in the neighborhood, or at least the, there's no, there's no, sorry, let me take that back. There's no proposal for what use it will be other than that it be consistent with the use of the neighborhood. 
creating this this lot in and of itself the creation of it is not different than any other lot in this neighborhood is that a fair summary of other yes. people's thoughts yes good so just swooping back to the issue of the utilities um, does anybody have a concern with um, allowing him allowing the applicant to have a utility that would run from the guy wire either aerial or underground whatever they saw fit uh, and was most practicable yes no no no, oh, no. Objection. Yeah, yeah no, no it's I consistent with I, agreeing that I knew what Kevin was saying. <laughs> yeah um, just making sure everybody does all right any other questions or concerns from the board I'll take a motion if anybody would like to make one on this application. And just to be clear, neither of you are wishing to add any further to the good. Anything further? No, thank okay. you. Mr. Chair, I move approval of final subdivision, subdivision review at 81 North Street um, with uh, as presented in the application dated October 7th, 2019, subject to the following conditions of approval. As we've just discussed, any application for a zoning permit for further development of Lot 2 shall include a landscaping and screening proposal meeting the requirements of Section 3506.F, um, and then our standard condition with requiring the recording of the final survey plat in the Land Records Office. Okay. And just Revised per Rob's comments about Revised. the lot right. Thank the you. dimensions on the lot division line and the setback revisions as discussed. Sorry, friendly amendment. Correct. And appreciated. Or maybe reminder, I don't think I can officially make an amendment. Okay, so I will I will add with that reminder uh, the adjustment to the plat as suggested by Rob, which involves the uh, turning the rear setback of lot one into a Turning the side setback of lot one into a rear nope. setback. Other nope. Turning the rear setback, making it five feet. <laughs> <laughs> um, there you go. And labeling the length of the boundary line between the lots one and lots two that are created by this subdivision. Motion by Kate. Do I have a second? You do. Second. Second by Kevin. Uh, any further discussion? I'll simply add, just to for point of clarification, we're understanding that this would allow the utilities to run either above or underground as the applicant has requested. Yes, thank yes. you. I had a question about what other utilities would have to be depicted on the the plat. Uh, the utilities don't have to be on the plat. They okay. were just on the potential site plan. Gotcha. Right. Yeah. All right, any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, please raise your right hand. You have your subdivision review subject to our final written decision that will be issued um, soon. And then, uh, and then, of course, there's a 30-day window at which someone can take an appeal. However, judging by the fact that no one is here um, contesting it, you can take that under advisement and play your risk pool as you see fit. Good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, and Good luck. I will send an email tomorrow um, to you and Richard Bell summarizing what needs to change on the final plat right. so that that can get you know get moving because we don't have anything contentious here going on in this decision. So. No. Great. Okay. Yeah, I'll get on to Richard. Okay. Good. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, I need that. <laughs> Thank you. All right, other business. Uh, I will simply note that, as I did before, the November 18th DRB meeting is canceled uh, because of lack of applications, so we all get an early Thanksgiving vacation. Um, the next meeting regularly scheduled is December 2nd, 2019. Do we have any applications for that not currently we'll see what comes in by friday okay so we may see each other before the holiday season if not well so. no yeah no, i mean there's, there's two, two december two, meetings two, two december, so. hey. <laughs> okay okay knock on wood <laughs> um i note that um the meeting schedule is this available online uh 
You know what? I don't even know if that's on the website. I bet it is. If not, I will make sure it is. It, it has sure. been in the past. I haven't looked recently. Yeah, I don't know if Audra yeah, they, got this up there yet, but I'll check. Yeah. Sometimes and they have a more advanced calendar system now, so it, mm -hmm. it may be buried within this. However, you know, I mean, I just know for everyone that we have the uh, our upcoming 2000, uh, 2020 um, DRB schedule, which shows the various days that we'll be meeting on Mondays or the days because of holidays that we'll have to meet on Tuesdays, mm -hmm. which are only three next year. Yeah, and I think this is also particularly useful because it sort of it shows the application deadline and the date that the meeting needs to yeah. be warned publicly mm -hmm. in relation to the design review committee and our meetings. So that could be interesting to anyone who's just trying to follow the process. So having this whole PDF up there somewhere would be grand. Yeah, I think... I think in past, Audra hasn't necessarily wanted all of that up there, but yes, we can put it up there. I mean, we always have it in the office if anybody asks yeah. as well. But yeah. Yeah, we are trying to we are trying to make we're in a process of making edits to all the committee websites and the planning department website to make things more applicant friendly and more informational and and a little more. Try got some plans for some frequently asked questions pages and things along those lines and more you know potentially even some videos when it comes to design review things like that so great great and i think this will add nice this to the mix to that for the applicants yep. and for anyone else who's agreed to, yeah thank you cool. uh anything else any further business all right i will take a motion to adjourn so moved motion by rob i have a second Second. Second by Kevin. All those in favor of adjourning, please raise your right hand. <clears throat> and we are adjourned. Thank you all very much for participating.